Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you guys a few variations on the Wing Chun trapping for you to practice, so stay tuned. Now remember, in trapping, uh, because nobody actually fights like this, right? And there's a lot of purpose in training drills that to understand the position. But you have to understand that for us to train trapping, it's not so much because we want to fight like this. Those are the positions to, uh, to use as a reference point, right? We have what we call the low reference point, which is a low line. You have a high reference point. You have a rear hand, ref uh, rear hand reference point, which is used in a rear hand to block, right? Depending on the energy, sometimes the guy will stick to me. Well, he might push my hand towards me. That's two different things. Because blocking tend to stick, right? If he's pushing me, that means he's given, right? There's two different ways to talk about this as well in a later on series. So in this first sequence on the Wing Chun trapping, we're gonna explore in the option, talk about the front hand into the rear hand. Now remember, all the drills that we're training in Wing Chun are developing your attributes, right? It uh, doesn't matter if you're talking about speed, you know, your sensitivity, your power, right? All the attributes has to be trained. In Wing Chun specifically, we want to train the sensitivity and responses. I want to train the sense and the timing, even when he is attacking me, I have the time to respond. But how do you get there? That's the application side. We can talk about like even he's framing against my neck, like I'm trying to double shoot right here, he hands here, now I can trap and hit. That's one way. The trapping doesn't necessarily mean that the hand has to make a contact. This is the type of contact. This is the type of contact. He grabs my hand, that's the type of contact, right? So not necessarily, all right, the hand has to be here in order to trap. This is only one referencing point. He can grab my hand like this, right? Even his thumb like this, I can still trap, I can still hit, right? He grabs my shoulder like that, I can still trap, I can still hit. He friends against my neck once I come in, I can still trap into the hit. And these are the attributes we're trying to develop. And of course, knowing when and why we're doing things are super important, okay? So here are the drills I wanna show you guys. So the first position is that we're gonna put the hand on the center like that. And just knowing that I never want to let my hand come back to my center. The theory that I like to tell people is that you understand that you have your own space like this. My job is how do I occupy the space without having to lose my own space. So one way we can talk about this, I want sort of understanding this. I want his defensive line away from my center. So now all the space in front of me are a lot easier for me to go, go, go through, right? And that's the concept. So instead of having anything about pax out, stepping in and trying to crush him, I want to deflect the body away from the center. And that's a theory that I want to practice, right? Um, and of course, on a practical standpoint, if a guy is stronger than you, you may not ever be able to crush a line. So a lot of times I'll push my elbow forward so I can pull his body in, okay? Now here's the drill. Number one, we're gonna create a high reference point. First one, when I slap, which means I'm gonna pox out, right? You'll hear this a lot. Pox just means to slap in hand. Or sometimes I glue my elbow to my body. So that way when I step forward, this will stay connected, okay? So when I slap the hand down, this hand doesn't come back. This is gonna give him a lot of space. Remember what I said earlier is I don't wanna lose my space, but rather I wanna protect, and my, uh, protect my center at the same time project the hand forward. So as soon as I slap his hand, I wanna attack. It doesn't matter if you do a knife hand, you do a straight punch, or we'll do a horizontal fist. In Wing Chun, we tend to go vertical, like that, okay? I'm actually attacking towards the center. For my partner's safety, he's just gonna protect off the center like that. You see the hand? So again, this is called Pa Da, or this way, it doesn't matter. I'm attacking towards his head or the neck, same thing with my punch, like that. That's number one. Number two, we call this La Da, which means pulling the hand in, and then I punch to the center of the body, right? The head sometimes move a little too fast in close range, so we prefer to hit the center mass, which is the body, upper body. So as I hit, I let this hand travel through, and I wanna make sure my elbows are resting on the top of his form. I don't reach over like this, neither do I uh, let my body turn on the weight. So instead, I just strike and turn my body off the side. Notice my, my hand right here, my thumb don't grab. I use my palm to sort of make a connection, okay? So that's two basic concepts we have to understand. Now let's talk about trapping, okay? First trap. I strike first, okay? If his hand is right here, we're gonna do it into a second defense. Now my, uh, my rear hand is gonna shoot right through as this hand come back slightly. Notice my hand still project forward at the same time. As I do this, I'm gonna trap the top hand like this. Don't lose the connection. My elbow is still engaged. Then from here, step forward, and I'm just gonna hit around the solar plexus, okay? So do it one more time. I strike one, two right here. Notice how my body turn. My elbow's gonna drive forward so that way his elbow goes back. From here, this is gonna trap us in time. My body steps forward and hits. 
right? There are three ways to cre uh, create power in Wing Chun, especially with the Wing Chun punch. One is stationary. This is understanding the engagement and the hip, right? Secondary is the turning motion. So I can frame right here. Notice my body is sort of cocking backwards. Now when I turn, it is the same thing that when we do that right cross with the left hand. It's the same thing when I move my body, I'm pivoting, right? So the first stage is understanding stationary, connection between the joints, right? Hip, shoulder, elbow, hip, boom. Number two is your turning motion. Number three is adding a footwork and then stepping at the same time. So in this case, once my body is here, I'm gonna step in. As I step in, I push up my hip forward and that's when I hit like that, okay? So again, one, two, and three, okay? Body has to push that forward. That's the first variation. Number two variation, I go one. This time, he's gonna push me a little bit. So now my hand's coming off the line. So now the bottom hand's gonna shoot right through. As I shoot through, my elbow stays down. Notice how my hip turns forward at the same time, I just gonna trap and then crush the center at the same time, okay? So again, number one, number two. Notice how this hand comes back. Number three, I trap the top hand, so the top hand automatically blocks the bottom hand, and then I step forward and then hit at the same time. Again, one, two, and three. If you put that in one motion, the hand will travel right straight through the center, okay? So again, number one, I hit, I open, I strike. Number two, I hit, I open, and then I strike. That's the first variation, okay? Left and right side. Number two, I hit this time. Notice how this hand is gonna push me a little bit. I'm gonna wage my hand through on the bottom. This hand is not continue to give me that push energy, right? So now this time, instead of trying to trap the hand, which makes it super difficult, I'm gonna turn my body like that. So this hand at the same time, just strike towards the center, right? If it happened to raise the hand up uh, with the same hand, the hand will punch towards the head. Then that's the reason why we'll always go to a center mass. Because once they reach your hand, see? Boom, my hand will aim to the head. So one more time, number three. One, two. He pushed my hand, that's when I'm gonna turn. So for this one, I don't step forward, okay? Because the body energy is stiff, when he is stiff like this, it's a lot easier for me to pull his body forward. So therefore, when I strike, I just turn my body like that. And you can, of course, turn the body and strike into many variations. For now, just hit, open, strike, like that, okay? You open the center line, when you strike, you're pulling the hand down, the same time you strike. So that's number three, okay? Now, you can play in variations, but what you want to understand is where the hand placement is super important. Sometimes you'll place the hand right here, sometimes you'll place the hand like this. If you place the hand right close to the elbow, never reach to the, to the outside because I'm giving up my position. While I'm crossing my line, he might counter me super fast, just like that, right? So if he does counter to your elbow, I draw my hand and I strike. Notice when he pushed my elbow like that, right? I just draw my hand. Now I'm creating a great structure between my elbow and my shoulder. So now he tried to push me forward, my elbow's here connected to my hip. As he pushed, I take this hand and I just drop it straight down. Notice how his body came in forward a little bit? It's because his shoulder has an engagement. As soon as that engagement on the shoulder comes in, I strike towards him, okay? That's one way to think about this, okay? Now, if you're adding slightly more advanced level, we can go to a low reference hand. So this is a low reference position. I trap with the rear hand. Number two, do the same thing, trap and hit. That would be the same thing as number one. Low step, one, two, three, and four, right? So again, low punch, trap and back fist, open a strike, and pata, right? Number two, I'm gonna go on the outside. So now he push my hand across, I shoot my hand through, and I trap on the outside hand. So again, one, two, three, just like that, okay? Now, what if he decides, oh, sorry, I missed one more. So once I pass out right here, right, sometimes he'll push like that. So instead of pop, and I just lop, okay? Sometimes he'll raise the front hand because sometimes, you know, when I scare him, the hand will shock, will go in the air and try to block. So when I hit like that, the front hand stops me, then you go back to a very first variation, you just trap and back fist. You can do the same thing, he goes like this, see? Now my hand go through, or it can go like this, like that. That's still sort of the same trapping, same variation. When I trap, he raises the front hand, I trap again. Now my hand can go to the outside, and it can still trap forward, okay? And of course, the sequence can go unlimited and depend on how you want to train, right? But for training purposes and a training drill side, stick with the front hand. All I do is understanding I'm trapping either in square position, right side forward position, Left side forward position, right? These are the three things that, as a basic level that we all have to understand. So on the right side forward position, same thing. When I trap the hand, open, strike, right? My hand 
Once I go in, the hand doesn't stop. I don't go one and I stop. My hand touch, go, and then strike. Same thing when I go outside. My body goes at all time, okay? So to recap, number one, my hand goes like this. Number two, my hand goes on the outside. Number three, he pushed my hand a little bit. Now, I lap that, okay? And then just basic drills like this will help you to understand the variations of a drill, okay? And of course, um, if you have any questions, just let me know, guys. Uh, this is, I will, I will, I will leave the information below in the description section. Um, of course, any other questions, just leave a comment in the below. I'll try to answer you guys back. I hope you guys like the video. I'll see you guys next week.